Okay, so the first step in doing this is taking your one clip and separating it and trimming it down and such. So, I'm going to take this clip, get it right when he's jumping. It's about the peak of my jump, actually, or the peak of your jump. I had to split clip the little scissors over here. That's the first one. I'm going to find the blank shot I shot during this video. Right there. Cut around this. And anything in between this, I don't need. You're probably not going to have that much excess space because I was talking during this, explaining it to you. And the last one is the third jump, or the second jump. So I'm going to get. Uh, to peak of that jump, as you can see, it's not really that well because my leg's kind of low, but it'll still work out just fine. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is the first jump where we cut at the peak. You're gonna find before that changes to the blank shot, and you're gonna see this. You're gonna hit this camera button over here, freeze frame, and you're gonna hit export, and then you're gonna save it to the folder you like and make sure you remember where you saved it and then we're gonna open that in paint or if you like to use some sort of photoshop uh, software that's okay as well now I'm not gonna sit there and show you me painting around this the whole time but basically what you're gonna do is the main thing you should do is crop around yourself so use the selection tool and the reason I'm showing you this in paint is because most of you probably have it if you have Windows and if you have Mac you probably have something even better. Um, I have the main mainly me selected and then you just go to edit and oh, never mind it's an image and then crop. And then after you do that, zoom in some and take the paint brush, get the that green right there, the most greeniest green. The price sounds stupid, but similar to what the color of green screen would be. And you're gonna just paint around you. Um, and once you have that done, you should look like this. And then you're gonna say, and then you're gonna save that image, and then we're gonna use it later. All right, so we have the image done, and. Before we start keyframing, I'm just going to suggest you trim it down to a reasonable amount. Now, if you're jumping a farther away, like a far distance, then you might need more than this. And if you're, you shouldn't do too much shorter of a distance than this. But usually, it's not going to be too much over like about five frames. So, got yeah, five frames picked out, or maybe six. I'm not sure. And we're going to insert the image here so have it in the project uh, organizer thing here I'm just going to click and drag it to video 2 and trim this up some more now it's equal length as this now it's too big, it has green so let's fix that effects Go to your green screen or chroma key. I'll just do chroma key. Apply, edit effects. Yeah, use a dropper right here. Select the green. Um, you're gonna have to play with this. I uh, don't know. I'm getting that much green. Usually, it goes away a little better than that, but maybe raise the similarity mostly to get a little bit of blend before I start going away. You can see a little green, but it's going to be a lot smaller, so it's not going to be noticeable. Select it, go to motion, open it up, scale it down some. You have to get it to the same size as you. You have to go back and forth here and try to um, make them match. Now let me match this up real quick. Alright, um, I got these two clips matched up pretty well. The size of me is looks similar, so now we're going to start the keyframing. 
um, before you start keyframing, you gotta make sure this is. You can just click and drag this around and stuff. And you need to have it so once it changes to the blank shot in the image, it needs to be just a little bit over. See how it kind of moves? I'm going that way. Okay, then you can start it. So go to motion, hit the clock, the toggle animation, starts the keyframing. And you're going to go to this last frame and try to match it up where it hits the wall. And you have to kind of go back and forth again. And this also needs to be a little before this, so it's moving. So it's not, you don't need to line it up perfectly, you need to have a little bit before, like I said in the other one. So I'd say that looks about pretty good. I'll render it and let you have a look. Still looks good, but it's not done yet. We need to now go to effects and search Gaussian blur and apply that. And then you're going to edit effects. Going to go to the Gaussian blur part of this and make it noticeably blurry but not too much so that's kind of you have to that's your own preference of what you want that to be at I'm just going to do around 20 and now we're going to get ready to add sound effects alright we're going to add the sound effect of a whoosh to give it more of a realistic appeal and I have my sound effect right here. I'll put a link in the sidebar from the website I got it off of. Before I put it in there, I'm just going to trim it up a little bit. Have that unneeded space. Alright, so you want it pretty much in the middle. And I like, I'm going to have mine a little louder, but that's just up to you on how loud you want it. And it's in the middle, I'd say. And this is how it looks. Okay. Now the next step. Alright, this is the final step. And to, uh, I also do this to, I think it helps it look more realistic. Um, right as I'm about to jump, as I'm bending my legs down, and right as they're about to push up, I'm going to cut that there. I'm going to right click this, go to time stretch. I'm going to raise up the speed. I would suggest around maybe 130 to 150. I'll do 150 and right click in this empty gap because it's going to make it shorter because it's going to be faster delete and close gap and now that's going to be a faster jump so it'll go into that transition smoother and then we're going to do it for the other clip for when I'm hitting the wall so right as I'm not done hitting the wall Cut. Same thing. Right click. Time stretch. Is that up more? And you're going to have to delete the gap again. And I'd say that's good. Um, hopefully that was simple enough for you. Uh, if you have any questions, just send me a message or leave a comment, and I'll try to get to you. And thanks for watching. Um, I forgot to explain this earlier, so I'm going to explain it now. Um, if you think this looks too quick, or you think your thing looks too slow, how fast you're moving across the screen, basically what you do is move this back a frame or two, and move your image back a frame or two. Go to Edit Effects, hit the clock in so it's not highlighted. It's going to delete what you did, and what you do is just start it again. And go to the final clip and you just have to realign it. And I'll make it quicker and if you drag it this way and readjust it'll make it slower.